Hi there, this is Robert with the Department of Art and Art History, and I am illustrating the yellow shafted northern flicker. So the specimen you see here is actually from the Natural History Museum on CU Boulder's campus. I'm just starting out with some basic architectural lines. I'm working in the basic shapes of the bird's body and where the legs are going to go. And then I'm going in and finessing those curves. I'm thinking about spiraling lines and curved lines rather than using straight lines. Uh, straight lines are good for mapping in shapes, but not good for communicating life. So now I'm going in with my Copic Multiliner. This is basically just to solidify the lines that I've mapped out. And I'm just thinking about um, just doing the outlines of the bird. You can think about this drawing as sort of like a coloring book. Um, we're not going to be showing any like extreme textures or anything like that. We are basically just breaking the bird down into its simplest shapes and forms. So thinking about the local colors and where specific patterning falls. And we're going to simplify that into um, specific regions. So you'll see here, I'm just mapping out where I want the darkest parts to be around the eye. I'm adding a little bit of shadow underneath that beak. And then I'm thinking about where I want the darkest darks to, to fall. The thing about illustrating birds is that you're going to get the most recognizable picture from the side. So it's always good to do a profile as your standard view, um, but feel free to do any angle that you please. This is me just going in with a felt tipped marker. Um, I'm mapping in those darkest darks like I said I was going to before, um, just where the absolute black parts are. and just adding a few more boundary lines in sort of a textural way. I want it to feel like feathers, but not be overwhelmed by texture. Here I am adding a little bit of notation as far as texture goes, um, just to note that those are very short feathers on the head and some longer feathers here, meshing into downy feathers on its back. And this is me just erasing the graphite lines that I laid down previously, uh, just to make it ready for watercolor. So if we look back at that specimen from the Natural History Museum, you can see that it's sort of like a golden gray color. Um, and the thing about watercolor is that you want to work in translucent layers. So I'm starting out with a basic gold color, um, very muted, very desaturated, and working in some grays over the head and the feet because I know that those areas are going to be mostly desaturated. I just really want like a nice golden base for the majority of the bird. And this is me laying in some of that golden brown um, for the, the yellow shaft feathers and mapping in that red mustache. The cap of the bird's head is actually a little bit of like a toasted marshmallow. It's kind of like brown. So I'm mapping that in as well. And I'm just going back over those feathers to add a little bit of texture with the watercolor so that we know that those are feathers. And you can see me starting to think about the patterning on the bird's back, the barring. So now I'm going back in with that felt tip brush pen and I'm working out where I want those black patterns to fall. The Northern Flicker sort of has like a leopard pattern on its back, but it's also known as barred uh, because they do form sort of like a striation across um, horizontally across the back. But the belly, the, the downy part of the belly on the woodpecker is um, spotted. So I'm using ovals on the belly and more amorphous forms on the back. So this illustration is actually by John James Audubon. Uh, back in 1827 as part of his Birds of America, um, you can see that his birds feel a little bit flat, and that's because Audubon actually illustrated birds um, from study skins. So they harvested, if you will, uh, several numbers of birds and then actually illustrated them dead. Um, so here's another example by Albert Dürer, uh, Wing of a Blue Roller and Dead Blue Roller, and you can really see here that he is 
illustrating very scientifically a study skin of a bird. So back to the illustration, here I am just finishing up with that felt tip, um, adding a few little feather details with a finer tip, and thinking about shading with that fine tip marker. Just adding a little bit more of a yellow tone, um, finessing those colors where I want a little bit more depth. And you can really see that toasted marshmallow cap. And adding some texture and depth to those legs now. The nice thing about watercolor is that it sits flat on your paper. It sort of um, meshes into the tooth of the paper so that you can still work on top of it. This is me going in with some colored pencils just to pop some of those colors a little bit more as a final layer. You wouldn't want to do this um, while you still have lining to do. And here's the finished product. You can see that I focused mainly on the shapes and then worked in the feather details as a um, completing step. Thanks for following along today. I hope you had fun and I hope you have some time to make an illustration of your own. If you do share yours on social media, we'd love to see it. Just use the hashtag CUFieldGuide. Thanks.